Hey, was Kayfa like really the face of the Bronx featuring Josh? In this video, we will be talking about, was K-Flock really the face of the Bronx? There will be three other contestants, and we will be going through each one of their most infamous runs, and see if it can hold up against K-Flocks. Mm. These three contestants would be Sha E K, B Love, and D Thing. I will be going through D Thing and B. No, I don't think. I I think. B Love runs while Josh will be going through Sha E K, and lastly K Flocks run to see if the others were able to top or match K Flocks to determine if he was really the face of the Bronx. Hey, okay, who that? They go to Austin at V. Hey, okay, who that? Get up close and shoot from D. Don't let the V, we gonna walk up on feet. Sha E K is definitely a contender. Like, this is another thing with like the editing. I feel like you're throwing too many pictures out there. Like, we know Shy K is. Like, most people know Shy K is. You can have him in the background with the music video. We know Shy K is. Like, posting pictures and shit. Like, I don't know if you do that for TikTok. Just make it easier for that. But yeah. Tender for the faith. I know it's out the last video, but I, I forgot to say it. To start off, he has 72.3 million total views from his legendary streak. Oh, yeah. Starting from off he has 72.3 million total views from his legendary streak starting from oge all the way to new ops one thing he definitely has on his side is consistency he was dropping videos weekly sometimes even more but those five months were more than enough to make his impact and stamp himself as a contender to be the face he's also had quality visuals for every song with help from the likes of george cpd films and clo visions most people have him in their top five, and he's also one of the ones who pioneered. Damn, Caleb shot for him. What song was that? The Bronx. Cause I, ca like, I used to know Caleb like in twenty twenty one he was running. Shit. The Is Your Ready song really put him on the map. But like, I feel like that Shy K one was like it was just George and fucking CPD and uh, smaller um shooters. Drill scene. His grind hasn't gone unnoticed, as he has like support from many know. industry heads, being signed remember. to a label and getting features from PGF Nook and Sleazy World Go. He's had big shows across the US and even had shows in Canada. He's done a great job staying out of trouble and just focusing on the music. He's really been booked over the course of his career and has just focused on music, which is great for his image in the industry. Now for his issues. EK has always been a quantity over quality kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, I know how he every old shot was Caleb, but I'm saying like a part of that run. He dropped 19 songs in his about. legendary streak, and yeah. while there are many songs that I mess with, none of them have never really hit crazy. I'm not trying to say that 10 million views on Face of the What, a solo song isn't impressive, but it pales in comparison to Flock's hit songs. Also, EK has a okay. very one note sound. He does that. I ain't allowed to argue that Shy K's run got more hits like not looking at numbers it got more hits than k flux and and k didn't even have a run for real like from what 2021 that was probably his run 2021 wherever he dropped i i would take like more shy k songs than that in k flux no well but after a while you start to get bored of it which is why his views recently haven't been on the level they used to be. are we talking about numbers be uh -huh. still legendary in the scene and definitely a contender for the face of the bronx i mean yeah then is is oh this we talking about numbers this k flock no, no one's comparing to k flock next up we got beloved Beloved would start his run on the first month of the year dropping a legendary song featuring Sha E K and PJ Glizzy. He would drop a few more songs until his hit song, If You Know You Know. But he wouldn't stop there and then dropped, turned, Niki, Talk About It, and My Everything Part 1 through 3. His run would rack up over 65 million views with one of the songs going gold, the first ever Bronx drill rapper to do so and also had huge features from like G Herbo and A Boogie with the Hoodie. This run would really start to put his name out there and was one of the first. Yeah, I feel like you should have went over like what are we like, I think to be the face of our Bronx numbers got to play a factor. I feel like how people view you, like how people view k Flock, like people, people wasn't even questioning is k Flock the face of the Bronx. Once Is You Ready dropped, it, it wasn't a, like people, I, I view k Flock as a star. I viewed him as the face of the Bronx at that point and I feel like. Everything else was in consideration, quality of music, shit like that. First talked about potential mainstream Bronx drill rappers. With most people in the drill scene giving B-Love the respect he deserves and his ability to switch. You talked about it. I feel like that should have been something like we should have went over in the start. So I, I, I know what we're going off of. 
switch things up. He definitely has potential to be the face. Next up we got D-Thing, potentially K-Flock's biggest competition. D-Thing would start off his run in the beginning of the month on March of 2021. He would drop his infamous song Wyland for respect with the legendary Ugh. bar during his verse. One week later he would drop G's Bop which is currently sitting at 5.9 million views. The following week he would drop a collab with Mula G's called Savior Part 2 which would rack up over 1.5 million views. He would sit back and let the views stack up while still in the studio. D-Thing would come back hot in the beginning of summer with arguably his best song. The name of this song will be Play It Back which really started to show his diversity and talent. This is the point where everyone was really tuned in. Anyways, D-Thing would link up with his fellow- Yeah, I feel like you could have just showed a chart. Like, music videos on one side, like the, the music videos, like thumbnail and title or something. Or music video, title, and then the date they dropped. You could have just made a whole glow grab about that. Little friend, Bando, and yeah, drop yeah. their infamous song with their legendary going back and forth towards the end of the song. D-Thing sat down for a bit until August when he linked up with not just Bando, but Reem, Lee Drilly, Yes G's, and Six. The music video to this song would gain over 3.5 million views. D-Thing would continue dropping all the way up till his next hit song called Talk Facts. For this song, he linked up with Bando again and will also link up with T-Dot. The trio song will rack up over 35 million views and the song would be played all over social media. He would not stop there and soon dropped his freestyle on a popular channel called On The Radar. So this good. freestyle so would good. gain over 14 million views and showed how much talent D-Thing really has. He would continue dropping all the way until his last and final song on his channel for a while due to unfortunate circumstances. The name of this song would be Love D-Thing and will sample the infamous drill song Love Sosa. The music video to this song is currently sitting at 5.4 million views. D-Thing's views were easily set above the rest of the crowd with him ending his run with over 90 million views and his talent might be the highest we've seen coming out of the Bronx in a while. D-Thing has multiple sounds from Play It Back to Talk Facts. All his different sounds he does perfect and almost every song he dropped in his run was a hit and majority of the fans enjoyed his music. Alongside Shot EK, D-Thing was one of the originals out of the BX. His impact was huge not just from making good music, but from putting a lot of people on from his block. D-Thing's run really put him in the white G's on the map. That's a fact. I feel like that doesn't get looked at a lot. Like, he really gave T-Dot that talk facts it. You feel me? He, he Like, D-Thing obviously didn't need that shit. Like, D-Thing is still a star in his own right. But, you feel me? He gave that shit to T-Dot. Gave him a fucking hit. Not even just a hit. A mega hit. And with hella subscribers coming with that. Map. But does this hold and i feel like t dot's like that third wheel in that trio you feel me i think bando had that on the radar freestyle that went crazy i feel like do you think bando and t dot that's how it goes numbers wise and how people view them three up against k flock k flock is arguably the biggest drill rapper out of the x he gained over 278 million views with only 13 songs i didn't even include shake it in the total view count i'll explain why later for now let's look at his accolades he was one of the first out of Bronx Drill to ink a big deal, securing a $3 million deal with Capitol Records. In the span of like a week, he had four gold plaques, with Shake It, Is You Ready, Being Honest, and PSA. He doesn't even need features to pull crazy views. Is You Ready on its own has 62 million views. Now while he was free, Flock was running the scene. He's kind of like the opposite of EK in a way, with his main focus being quality over quantity. In 2021, he only dropped 11 music videos on his channel, with 7 on his channel and 4 more being collabs. But with those 11 videos, he took himself from a nobody to a multi-million dollar deal with industry support from the likes of Lil TJ and G Herbo. The biggest cosign he would receive however would come shortly after he was unfortunately arrested on a second degree M charge. He had a song on the way with Mula G's, Dougie B, and Bory 300 called Shake It before he was locked up. In a surprise turn of events, however, Mula was taken off the track and replaced by Cardi B herself. Shake It managed to crack over 1.5 million views in a day and went number one trending, solidifying Flock's place as a drill I, I, I still don't understand, bro. How much did they pay Mula to take him off that track, bro? Yes. Icon. Why? And I feel like Mula did that because he knew like he was gonna have to go in. 
You feel me? Later that year. He just wanted money for his kid and shit. Well, he maybe didn't stay out of maybe I'm chatting. the way in the streets is because I don't think I think he had his kid in what October, November of 2022. So he probably didn't even know he was pregnant. She was pregnant. As much as he yeah. should have, there is no doubt he made his Bring mark as one of the potential faces of Bronx Drill. While Sha EK and D Thing may have been pioneers of the entire Bronx Drill scene, and B Love was most definitely a pioneer of the sample drill genre, I think it's an undeniable. Nah, he's a pioneer of Bronx Drill too, and he's the pioneer. Wait. He said, you say sample drill in the Bronx facts. Be love was most definitely a pioneer of the sample drill genre. I th Not the genre. I ain't gonna lie. Siggy, Shawnee, been at that. But yeah, he, he the reason he got popular facts. I think it's an undeniable fact that K-Flock is the face of the Bronx. His impact has been undeniable. No, you said you said sample drill genre. Like, like that's a big genre. You're not talking about And Beloved was most definitely... A I'm I'm just saying like how I view things like I'm not trying to shit on y'all video and nothing like that. Josh said that, but we talking about Bronx, okay? The pioneer. But I'm just saying like some shit you gotta emphasize. Here of the sample drill genre, I think it's an undeniable fact that K Flock is the face of the Bronx. His impact has been undeniable with the amount of views he accumulated in the short time he was free, and his impact with many drill rappers and even his ops having Flock in their top five. Yeah. I don't know how how far impact goes, cause I think impact. I think B Love got a lot of impact with the sample drill. I think obviously the pioneers of Bronx drill had some type of impact, but K Flock had some type of impact because he made Bronx drill like he he made people see what the what the top level of Bronx drill can get you. Three million dollar deal, out the hood. You feel me? Have Everybody looking at you in the industry, from rappers to record labels, so that that is some type of impact. But music wise, I feel like mu mu music impact is is low compared to everybody else in this video. Facts. At the end of the day, this is not an objective opinion of Flock being the face. Music is subjective, and many people still enjoy Sha E K, D Thing, and be love over Flock. We just feel that Flock has had more influence and success putting him as the face of the Bronx. If y'all enjoy these types of videos, make sure to like and subscribe and- Yeah, I think that's a fact. That's what I was gonna say. I think Shay K was the face of the Bronx when K-Fly got locked up. You from that six month run, five month run, whatever it was, solidified Shay K in the record books. He's definitely a face of the Bronx at that time. k Flock. I don't think B-Loving D-Thing were ever the, the face. You can maybe argue 2020, I don't know. I was listening to Bronx Journal 2020. Maybe they were the face of the Bronx. I don't really know. But K Flock in 2020 was definitely the face of the Bronx. And check out. And I feel like it was that way until I would I would say he really stopped dropping. I feel like he stopped dropping like. I feel like from Brotherly Love to maybe. Because I remember there was a time in like, I think. September, October, and I feel like November was when he dropped the Being Honest G Herbo feature. I feel like at that time where he wasn't dropping, because I remember it was a break. I can just look it up. But there was a break in his music. I feel like that was when D-Thing kind of took the rock for a second. Boom, boom. Because when PSA dropped, I think that was August. September, it was early September. And this was November. Yeah, that's when the turning point was, I feel like. Yeah, then, you feel me? Bro, get locked up. Can't release no music. Shit like that. Check out Josh's channel down below. But that will be it for today. I will see y'all next video. So I feel like the first half, from Brotherly Love to Ban It, and you know, PSA, K Block had it, D Thing had it. After Talk Fast dropped and. But it's like he didn't even have it because he didn't drop like that. I don't know. You love had it? I don't know. K Vlog didn't have it though. K Vlog had a heavy impact even in ATO. What did K Vlog do? Like, you talking about impact on the fans? 
Mm. I think the craziest shit is how little songs Flock needed to become. Yeah, he was quality over quantity. And I feel like he knew that. He was smart in the, in the way he did things. Like, I remember his mom talking about, like, how, you feel me, K Flock would ask her for money to go to the studio and shit. And, like, he would. He, I, I, that's why I was shocked that he had so little music. Because I feel like. Bro, record a lot of music, but he was, like, he's one of them artists that you gotta, like, sit in the studio for a long time, really, like, mix and master, make everything perfect for him. And maybe that's what it was, because I know Polo G's like that. Polo G, like, that's why he, he drops an album once a year, or was dropping it once a year, because he's a quality over quantity. He has so much music in the tuck, but, you feel me, the songs that he releases on his album is the things that he think is perfect. I think Flux was the same way, thought the same way. And that's what got him a deal. In B-Love Academics interview, he considered himself the king, not the face. It's the same shit. Like that. Yeah, like, people say the, the king, the face. Um, Who else said that? They, they, it was making up names. It's all the same shit. It's who's at the top of Bronx Drill. 